David Gross is a theorist. He works on string theory, which hopes to unite everything in physics in one grand mathematical model. Robert Lochlin is passionate about experiment. He challenges Gross and the three students they meet to come up with ways to test their ideas about the universe. I wonder if you folks could talk a little bit about falsifying early universe models. Is there more than one of them that will account for facts as you see them now? It depends exactly what you want to falsify. Uh, so inflation so far, uh, I would call it a paradigm because it's still, it, it's still looking for a fundamental theory, a more developed theory to be embedded in. Inflation is an early phase of evolution of the universe in which the universe expanded exponentially rapidly. Inflation essentially is for the layperson what the Big Bang is. When the layperson thinks of the Big Bang, actually what they're thinking about is this moment of incredibly fast expansion of the universe. I guess Laughlin was saying, you know, is it really falsifiable in that, you know, do we have a series of models that we can then mm -hmm. pick out one from the other mm -hmm. um, due to certain experimentations? Well, it's an incredibly predictive theory, uh, but with very few parameters, which fits the data very well. But what are the alternatives to inflation? There are no sensible, that I know, alternatives to inflation in the sense that I described it, of saying that the geometry underwent inflation. Well, maybe you would be interested in knowing that actually some of the competitors, they have failed the text, this observation that really can falsify models. There have been for example, bouncing universes, uh, uh, beyond inflation scenarios. So it seems that they are really valid tests, yeah. Well, let me be devil's advocate. The cases I know of explosions uh, are unstable. They're hydrodynamically unstable. When, when things are changing scales as a result of a phase transition, which is what we're talking about, you get structural instabilities in them. Uh, a adapt an uh, example would be popcorn. Now, in the case of popcorn, it would be very difficult to work backwards from the measurements of popcorn to figure out what the popcorn looked like before you popped it. You could make some models, and certain models would fit the popcorn better than others, but they all might be completely wrong because you, you didn't have enough uh, uh, backwards time to see the kernel of the popcorn. Now, that's sort of what I'm getting at. It, it, when we talk about falsifying models, do you really have enough experimental constraints to really t tell anything? So, Bob, the inflation is not a phase transition. Inflation is not. It absolutely is. C can I maybe ask, try yeah. to answer what you say? Because it's an I mean, enormous amount of heat coming out of the background. It's, a phase. it's, it's not it's, it's, an explosion. Could, could David, you're, you're completely right. It's not an explosion because it's not hydrodynamical. But there is energy pushing the thing outward, coming from the equation of state of the matter, of, of the vacuum. And Bob, uh, this is very different. In general relativity, you can sit on the top of the hill and you're pushing the universe outward. Nothing, it's a totally, in a sense, stationary. There's now, a David, killing You know perfectly well this is a card trick. What it's actually doing is blowing up. Okay? Here. And are you arguing against the Big Bang? Wait, of course, I never argue, the first rule of theoretical physics is never argue with data. Okay? The question is constraining models. And one of the things that I've become very worried about in modern physics is the tendency to under-constrain models of experiment. So we say we've got the model in situations where there are many that will give the same experimental result. And in this subject, as far as I can tell as an outsider, the models that I've seen are all highly under-constrained. So we're on, we're on task here. So the thing I was trying to bring up here is the issue of uh, the interaction of ideas with experiment. So experiment plays a dual role for theorists. It gives them essential clues and hints and partial information on which they can construct a solid foundation for their theories. And then it tests the predictions they make and 
which is the, the, the way we've learned to uh, discard bad ideas. So it's absolutely essential. After the Big Bang and the initial expansion of the universe, inflation, matter cooled down and radiation escaped. The afterglow of this radiation is all around us. It's known as the CMB, or Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation. The CMB is a snapshot of the universe in its early days, when it behaved like what physicists call a black body. A black body emits radiation in a characteristic spectrum. Measurements of the CMB show that it matches the black body radiation spectrum very closely, and this, says Gross, is compelling evidence for our Big Bang theory of the universe. We have direct evidence that that microwave background is the most perfect ever measured black body radiation ever. Any laboratory on Earth, really? no matter how, absolutely. Yeah. Nobody one, can get better than 10 to the minus 4th and a, and absolutely. a, and a absolutely. 5. 10 to the minus 5. Nobody can, absolutely. It is the best black body radiation curve ever. The error bars on the okay. curve are usually smaller, smaller than the curve itself. Yeah. No, it's so, 10 to the minus 5. There is nothing in, on Earth that has ever been a better black body radiation. You know, I have a hard time with that, but I haven't looked, so I don't know. Maybe you're yeah. wrong. I, uh, by, well, I think, two or three orders of night. Mm. Let the record show that I do not believe this man until I look it up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Make a little bet. Yeah. yeah. Okay, a bottle of wine. Bottle of wine it is. Oh, wait, wait. Who gets to choose the wine? Uh, let's see. <laughs> Who's this? <Us. laughs> okay, if I lose, Who's I'll it? give you a good bottle. So okay? The, the so you're all witnesses. So what is it? What is it? The, no, uh, no tabletop experiment has ever gotten a, a uniformity of black body radiation better than the CMB. 10 to the minus 5. To the minus five. Minus five. Yeah. yeah. I'm happy to do that one. Okay, now. <laughs> that was a case of one? <laughs> <laughs> so he, he was surprised, I think, by, by that claim, and he thinks that in the laboratory one could do as well. And uh, it's my understanding that one can't even come close in the laboratory. And then they had this bet where he said, you know, I don't believe that it's possible to make a black body which is, you know, m more fine than the CMB, which is, of course, a bet that he's going to lose because the, the CMB the is the uh, finest black body in the world. Experience. But it yeah, shows exactly. also... Yeah, well, I had never heard that before. I, yeah. I, that, that was something... Yeah. I mean, it, it, in a way, as well as yeah. well. it shows so, this experimental, it shows experimental kind of verve that he says, you know, no, we can make it, we can do it better. You know, the experiments can be manufactured in some way that will basically improve on it. Let the record also show that whenever I lose a bet, I pay. I trust the same as with. Well, the record can't show that yet. That would be a cause. No, I have lost bets before, David. I oh, mean, if okay. you haven't lost bets, you aren't, you're not betting <laughs> hard have. enough. I have. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of bets on supersymmetry. <laughs> oh, I'm. That's too bad. <laughs> very, very bright people can easily delude themselves, and happens a lot. So you have to learn the skill of how to tell yourself no that the experiments are not agree with me and that even though I'm very proud of myself and I'm an egomaniac because we all are, I have to say I wasn't right and we have to go back to the drawing board and get it right. You want to propose things that can be proved wrong or you're not the real thing. Right. So but what you're saying is that uh, until we don't have the experiments, we should not produce models uh, that maybe in the future will be falsified or not? No. No, People are perfectly free to spend their time yeah. the way they want. No, but I mean, do you think it's useful to do it or not? Thinking about what might be is always useful. All of us do it. It's part of the discipline. Okay. I mean, I'm one of the worst offenders. Okay? I feel better. <laughs> and I have, I have the trashed papers to prove it. Okay? Okay. But um, this has to do with your, your desire to find what's fundamental. And the, one of the lessons you learn here is that you sometimes just have to wait until a good experiment comes. Sure, sure. Even though you probably, you might have figured it out. Sure, uh, Sometimes agree. there's more than one answer, and there's just no way you can figure it out by pure logic because, because sure, things sure. aren't constrained. I would like to return for, for a brief moment to string theory. As an experimentalist, of course, I would like to know how can, how can, I, how can I test it? When, when will there be a proper test? Part of the problem is that string theory isn't a theory yet. It's yeah, no, it's a framework. Um, 
the existence of extended fundamental objects that are pull, that are stretched out by the universe is the only direct signal of string theory I can easily imagine um, at this point. It would help to have a theory, and we've learned that string theory and quantum field theory are really the same thing, and we don't understand them. And um, so we're learning a lot about the theoretical structure, but it's still, unfortunately, still a framework and not a specific theory. What I would like to hear from string, string theory, and very soon, is these are the experimental things. This is how it manifests itself in our world, because that's when I think it turns into to real physics. Mm -hmm. So I would have preferred an answer saying that, yeah, we're, we're on the verge of finding it. And within a couple of years, we will present you with a recipe <laughs> on how to do an experiment. Sure. Th that would have Who been wouldn't? the optimal an answer, of course. In the near future, I think the best hope is, uh, is still the LHC, because we have a good chance there of learning a lot of new physics. And any clue and, mm -hmm. you know, is val incredibly valuable. I mean, my wild hope would be somebody would see some cosmic strings and we could see the cracking of cosmic strings and the gravitational radiation coming from those cracks. But, uh, but the real hope is that we will learn a lot from the LHC, from the, super, the nature of supersymmetry, uh, multiplets and breaking, and, and that that will appear while I'm still around to do something about it. Several days later, when the five physicists joined a boat trip, they were still arguing over who won the bet. Have you settled oh, it have yet? You said that? Well, no, I have to wait till I get home to check, but uh, okay. I think he should bad. pay up now. We actually have here three witnesses. Right. And what and I say is, those three constants are measured to ten significant figures on Earth, therefore I win the bet. No. It is true. Is Wait, stop this. <laughs> Remind me, because I don't no, think... No, you've also that. measured the principle of detailed balance to better than In a part of the In many ways. And a lots of ways, okay? In Therefore, I should win the bet. No, you should, indeed. But Look, okay, have, okay, you, okay, good. You should win the bet, of course. Yeah, yeah. Look, I think we understand each other now. And you, you and you know, if... If there isn't, I would, he wants the wine. For my lawyers. Exactly. <laughs>